On Newsnight, we are asking if organizations like the African Union are still relevant for Africa. Or could developments and peacemaking be more effectively handled bilaterally or by regional bodies? We joined in studio by Africa analyst Gideon Chitanga. Gideon, thanks very much for coming through this evening. Thank I remember um, being at the uh, launch of the African Union in Durban, um, I mean, this whole fanfare. This was the organization that was going to take Africa in a completely different a prog and progressive direction than the OAU had ever done. Do you think over the years it has done so? Yeah, I, I actually think um, the continent is doing well in spite of the contradictions. And I think that um, the African Union is fairly done very well. It's a very young institution. And if you, you look at it comparatively, you look at it in an international context, you will see that there is a lot of external pressure for the African Union and for African countries. And we also have uh, a lot of uh, internal contradictions in Africa that are interlinked with the things that happen um, and they are affected by the international big powers. So that context in its own, the edge and the international dynamics and the power dynamics, it broadly the structured, structural dynamics that are, are put Africa in a disadvantaged position will tell you a story that the little that we are doing it shows that we are progressing. But can we do more than that? Yes, we can do more. I think that um, African politicians, and by politicians I'm using a broad term that include those who are in government and out of government, need to urgently address issues of conflict so that the, con the continent has peace everywhere across the continent, be it um, in democratization conflicts like uh, in Lesotho or in Zimbabwe, where we have had um, issues which are still being debated today, or serious conflicts that are associated with uh, terrorism and so on, I think the AU should be more proactive. And where Africa is concerned, the AU can then say, this is our, our own problems, and be more proactive in resolving them. When you, when you count, in so one hand, the achievements mm -hmm. of the AU so far, what do you mentioned? It's, it's difficult to, to point, uh, say, counting one by one, because uh, dealing with various issues is basically a process. Uh, but I would say the involvement of uh, the AU in every other conflict that you can think about in Africa, it's, it's already an achievement in itself. For the AU to state that we as Africans, we want to be involved in mediating conflicts in Zimbabwe, Lesotho, So conflict Burundi, resolution and, and so end on. to wars yes. um, uh, is, is something is one, that, yeah, it's one achievement area. which is being uh, dealt with. Uh, the idea of rolling out a long-term plan in terms of uh, uh, economic goals to, al yeah, to alleviate poverty and uh, facilitate economic growth, it, just that ability, it is an achievement. Working towards it is another challenge, but uh, it's probably something that we can discuss as a long-term aspiration. Uh, the ability to mobilize and galvanize Africans to focus on our continent, be it just celebrating our Africanness, is crucial because that is where we start from, by accepting our identity. And then we move forward in terms of uh, generating ideas that are grounded uh, on the challenges that we face as Africans on a day to day. So these things are important. They are collectives. You can't isolate them and say one, two, three, four. We have to acknowledge that. But we have serious challenges that we need to resolve going forward. Well, let's talk about some of them. Yeah. I mean, there's the situation in South Sudan, yeah. which remains un, un, unresolved. There is the DRC, you know, for example. Elections have not been taking place, and leaders in particular of, the, uh, of uh, southern African countries seem to be tiptoeing uh, around the issues here, uh, refusing to, um, you know, uh, um, um, read uh, the president uh, who has overstayed um, the riot act. You know, how do we deal with those situations? because they say to a lot of people that we are still very far away from uh, dealing with even the basic of things. My, my like get doing an election. Yeah. I mean, if you have timelines, <laughs> if you said this should be the preconditions, when then someone, a president, for example, flouts those or runs rough short over the, the broader interests of the country, then they should be dealt with, but none of that is happening. It, 
and that, that is a serious po political problem that goes back to where I started, where you need to have politicians who are committed to first the national interest, then second, eh, or simultaneously to a continent that is moving forward. Eh, when, when each time I look at the DRC, I actually think that the, the countries that are around the DRC, and particularly Rwanda, eh, have to be proactive and to be positively supported, supportive of a process that builds or invest in peace in the DRC. Second, this is one of the biggest countries, eh, probably wealthiest in, in the African continent. So African leaders should seriously look at the situation in the DRC and say to the external big powers and big multinationals, by the way, which are already benefiting by exploiting resources in the DRC, to say that we want peace first before your economic interests and but other is, strategies. isn't that what is the problem? The fact that they have vested interests, and because of their vested interests, they are not sober or objective, or they are not doing what they ought to be doing, because they have to be kind to this neighbor so that this neighbor doesn't isolate them in the event. I, they are, yeah. I, I think it is, it is a nature of uh, states and political players to have vested interests. The issue is this vested interest should not be a then part or it should not be embedded in the conflictual, endless conflict that is prevailing to an extent that instead of building and seeing the long-term benefits, you destroy and get short-term benefits. And by the way, destabilizing the DRC denies Africa, I think that a stable DRC, which is economically viable, would uh, by a very huge margin uplift the GDP of the continent and the, 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 the well-being of the of the of the of the Congolese themselves. So so the issue that Africans, African leaders in, in the in IGAD, the East African region, cannot look at each other in the eye first and say, we are brothers, we have to care uh, uh, for the livelihoods of these people who come from this country first. Isn't, isn't that the problem? Isn't the problem really leadership, and I suppose by extension us, given that we do not get our leaders to do the right things? Because how else do you explain, um, you, you know, what is happening in the TRC, the, pre, the, the president continuing to stay on? How else do you explain Pierre Nkurunziza's uh, regime, you know, um, in Burundi continuing to do what um, it's, been, it's been doing? Mm -hmm. Where do you think lies the problem? Is it us not holding our leaders accountable, or is it the leaders themselves looking, uh, whether it's self-preservation or looking after, after their own interests? Yes. What, where, is, where lies the problem? Clearly, you are, you are right. Leadership is a problem, and not in general, but you, you get cases of individual leaders that are busy looking after themselves and are selfishly uh, using the resources of a country, including accumulating power for their own purposes. Uh, I think to that extent, uh, uh, the African uh, continent and uh, to an extent regional institutions uh, are failing in being but, assertive. But they have failed. SADC, the last SADC summit here in Pretoria, uh, tiptoed around uh, these issues and other um, conflicts uh, in the region. So the question then becomes, on a day like this, what do you and I do uh, to move the continent forward, given ample evidence that our leaders aren't doing what they are supposed to do. We, we, what, should, what should we be they are, they are, The success of the contemporary, uh, the current crop of leaders is that they are creating institutions. Our duty is to strengthen these institutions so that we can use them to act and deal with uh, the vicious circles of conflict that we, uh, we seem to be, what the, which they are failing to resolve in the present moment. Uh, uh, in the case of SADC, I think the institutional framework is great. The problem is a uh, political will and lack of assertiveness. It, we, we see in ECOWAS uh, the same uh, inst institutional framework, but more stronger than SADC, being used to deal with those leaders who are reluctant to, to leave our power. For example, the Gambia uh, transition was actually eventually facilitated uh, from um, the former president to the current president, Adama, because ECOWAS was decisive in intervening. So we need to take those lessons and build on them so that we sustain an Africa that is proactive and allows us to deal with conflict. Mr. Chitanga, thank you very much for uh, coming through. Thank you so much. Thank you.